Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today, we'll talk about iconoclasm. Iconoclasts have shown up every so often throughout history, but for the most part, different iconoclast movements haven't been very strongly related to each other. It's just that every now and then, someone gets the idea that statues, images, and icons, either of a certain type or in general, shouldn't be made and or should be destroyed. That's what iconoclasts are. The word iconoclast, roughly translated, means icon smasher or breaker of icons. Christianity has had to deal with iconoclast movements a couple of times, but the first time, and the one that's usually meant by the phrase iconoclast, is the movement in the Byzantine Empire beginning in 726 AD. By this period in history, the Roman Empire had been relocated to Constantinople, and although nobody called it that at the time, we now refer to it as the Byzantine Empire. However, someone else had also gained a strong foothold in the region. Islam. The iconoclasts were a group of Christians who, in the Byzantine Empire, the eastern sections of the church, began forbidding the use of icons to represent Jesus, Mary, the saints, or any other holy thing. It even got to the point where Christians in those sections of the world would need to hide their own icons for fear that they would be confiscated by the church leaders in those areas, or the soldiers of one of the emperors who took the side of the iconoclasts, like Constantine V or Leo V. While there's no definite proof that these Christian iconoclasts got the idea from Islam, there's no question that Islam is and has always been strongly opposed to the use of icons and images, especially those meant to represent anything holy, and Constantinople was relatively close to the Muslim-controlled lands. Most likely, they were an influence on the iconoclasts, even if that influence was indirect. A couple of times, strongly iconoclast emperors would show up in the Byzantine Empire, then later be replaced by emperors and empresses who loved icons and wanted to bring them all back. Finally, iconoclasm was ruled to be a heresy at the Second Council of Nicaea. Sadly, that didn't stop iconoclasts from resurfacing again and again, but it did solidify the position of the Catholic Church on the topic that icons and holy images were good things to have and use in the pursuit of holiness. Next time, we'll be skipping over a few hundred more years to arrive in the 11th century and see what happened to the Gnostics in that time period. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.